Hi, it's Starno with Wave Oven Recipes, and today I'm going to be cooking up a whole chicken in the Gourmet French Door Air Fryer Oven, and we'll see how it does cooking up a whole chicken right now. All right, so I've got my chicken here. I've got the breast side down because I'm going to season and flip it, but it's a six-pound chicken, fresh, and um, I'm going to go ahead and. Season. I've got myself some Old Bay lemon and herb seasoning here and I also have some black pepper that I'll basically be freshly cracking all over the chicken so just going to get it seasoned up on both sides of the chicken and as I get this other side seasoned up I want to point out that I've got a Copper Chef bacon grill mat underneath the chicken here in the bake pan I've got the mat kind of pulled further to the left than the right. The reason why I'm trying to basically put more of it to the left and the right side is because I want to try and keep things open where the air fry fan is so that, you know, if that fan wants to, you know, go into effect during the roast at all, the fan won't be inhibited at all. I'll just have this side going up against the side wall, which shouldn't be a problem. But the Copper Chef Bacon Grill Mats are pretty cool. They are reusable, washable, and they don't overheat things like a like the aluminum foil could potentially do in cookers. You can check my Amazon shop. That link's in the video description. If you don't get anything when you try the link in the Amazon shop for it and the accessories, cooking accessories, then that means that they're probably out of stock. But, you know, when you can get a hold of them, they're a pretty good thing to have. And I'm just going to finish with seasoning up the chicken here. Alright, so I've got things all seasoned up. Got my eye grill 2 set up with a meat probe down in the breast and one in the thigh. And I'm uh, going to go ahead and turn the cooker on now. So, got it on. Going to hit that roast. And I'm going to leave it at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for this cook. And I'm going to take the cooking time up to an hour. We're going to leave it at 400 because this cooker doesn't always cook as hot as some others depending on the functions being used. And so with roast, I'm going to just hit it at 400. I'm going to hit start there. Let things preheat. Once that preheat's done, we'll get this chicken on in there. Alright, so preheat time is over with, so it's time to get this in there. I'm going to put it on the low rack because, you know, I don't want the chicken hitting the upper heating element or being too close, and I want to be able to see the bottom of it really well. So, get it on in there. I'm still, my mat's still kind of covering the fan a little, so I'm just moving it a little. Moving things around a little. Now that fan isn't being blocked much at all. So let's try and close up and see if my alright, try to close up and make sure that my uh, my wires here don't inhibit the door. There's a little gap in the door actually right there. I can leverage that gap in the door right there at the top a little. Let's see. There we go. Alright, things seem to be good to go like that. So, I'll go ahead, I'm probably going to have to disinfect those doorknobs, well the door handles a little bit, but let it go ahead and cook for a while and we'll keep an eye on the temp. Once the breast and thigh are at like 165, then uh, we'll take it out or maybe I'll bring you back to cover things with foil if the top of it starts getting a little too brown. But I'll bring you back later when there's anything else to do. Alright, so about 40 minutes have passed in the cook. The breast temperature is 86, the thigh is 107. Those bottom heating elements are putting in some work down there. And I see the top is getting, you know, starting to get a little brown. So I've got some foil here. And I'm going to go ahead and pause. Whoops, pause. And open up. And I'm going to go ahead and just get some foil on top of here. So here we have our 
chicken how it looks so far. I'm just going to try and whoop, be careful. Putting some foil over top. And they don't make a copper chef bacon grill mat to just kind of top your food when you. I think this piece of foil is a little small. Oh, there. Maybe it's a, get that part of it lower there. See if I can get it down. All right. Wonder how this fan's going to act. Putting it like this. Alright, I've got it kind of on there, but I'm just going to kind of see what happens with the foil like that and the fan, since the fan's on the side. Maybe it won't require... Eh, it's kind of hitting the top. I'll just work on this. Alright, it took a little effort because I just wanted to get the foil in there right and try to avoid these darn wires from causing too much trouble. We'll see how this does now. So it's you know kind of covered from the top heating element there and the fans aren't causing too much trouble so we'll just let things continue i'll bring you back when it looks like things are closer to done or you know done all right so now a total of 59 minutes have passed and it's cooked the breast is just 127 degrees the thigh is 146 degrees and i'm hitting this at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, some cookers, I could have used 375 and this chicken would be done. But, you know, this one, you know, I came at it a little hotter because I thought it might need a little more time. But, you know, it's going to need more time. Even at a hotter temperature, it needs more time. So, I'm going to, you know, basically give maybe another 30 minutes and just let things continue. I guess I'll make it 31 to kind of, you know, make it maybe 90 minutes even or closer to it if things have to go that far but uh, you know it's interesting the cooker is going to take a little longer on the roast you know than some others and then there are some that take 90 minutes you know I've had some that go near two hours on a whole chicken so we'll just let this continue going and I'll bring you on back you know because of the wires that I have in there, you know, when I tried to put the foil on and then I moved the wires, it kind of moved my foil and, you know, maybe the top, or maybe it'll get brown on some parts, maybe it won't. But we'll just let it continue cooking. We'll see what we get. I'll bring you back. So now about an hour, 25 minutes have passed. And we're at 154 degrees, but I don't think we're going to make it in time. So I'm just going to add another like five minutes so that, you know, maybe Lord willing it'll be done in maybe about an hour, 40 minutes. We'll see. But we're going to let it continue to cook and I'll bring you back when it's done. All right. So all the time that I added is about to run out. So you saw the time that I added earlier and it's up to 162 now I'm sure someone could say I could take it out now let carry over do the rest sorry for the beeping but I'm not a fan of taking things out to carry over and it's been cooking in there for a long time what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna let it set in there with the heat that's in the cooker on it and Lord willing the temperature rise while it's in there you know still in the cooker with whatever heat remains in the cooker during its cool down process and all and let it you know reach its desired temp reach the desired temp that way rather than taking it out and trying to rely on carryover taking it out so I'm just going to leave it in there for a bit you know let it continue cooking inside of the cooker without it you know actually running and I'll just bring you on back a little later when you know it should be good and finished and all All right, so ended up leaving it in here for a while, went and took care of some other things. After about five minutes of it sitting in there, though, I did see it go up to 165. And, you know, I just left it and had to take care of some things. But you can see the condensation, you know, it's been, you know, almost 
almost an hour just kind of sitting in there chilling in the gourmet, you know, with the cooker off. So we're going to get it on out now. I'm pretty confident that it has absorbed all the juices. So let's uh, get it on out of there and see what we've got. We'll get the lid off the top here. Here's our completed bird. At least the top didn't get, you know, too overcooked there. I'm just going to get those meat probes on out of there. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the tongs here to get the bird onto my cutting board. There we go there. Close on up. So now we'll just go ahead and cut right on in and uh, see how things are doing in here. Meat seems pretty juicy and moist there. Definitely seems pretty juicy and moist. So just going to cut a bite off for a taste test right quick and we'll go ahead and do a taste test. Alright, so let's thank God for the chicken and do a taste. Now, despite it setting for a while, it turned out perfect. It's very good. I mean, it's still moist, you know, leaving it in the cooker for like almost literally an hour after the cook. It's still, you know, is real moist and good. You know, since the cooker doesn't really, you know, stay super hot, I guess, you know, it was able to stay in there and not dry out or anything. So that's pretty cool. It took a while to cook. But on the other hand, the fact that it doesn't retain a whole bunch of heat to heat things up real fast, you know, you can leave something in there for a while longer and you're good to go. So it turned out good. Everything's fine. It turned out well. No type of smoke issues or anything. And so, you know, all good. Now, you can always check out my blog, SuperWaveOvenRecipes.com in the video description. Lots of ways to help the channel including the cookbook and there's a recipe for whole chicken in the cookbook and you can usually use recipes for one that are in there for one cooker that were used in one cooker and others they're usually cross compatible and uh you know if you have to make some adjustments it might not be too much but with all of that said if you like this video please do give it a thumbs up share the video with a friend leave your comments subscribe hit that notification icon and good eating